Hey folks, welcome back to this driving game series with Geometry Nodes. In today's session, we're going to be having a look at how we can take our chassis system that we have set up here to deal with steering and driving forwards and backwards as well as braking. So that's all nicely set up for our movement mechanics. Let's actually put a vehicle on it. Right now we've had cones, but it'd be nice if we had some actual wheels and a vehicle. And fortunately, I have actually made one. So you can just go ahead and grab the resources file, the truck resource file from the, uh, the link down below. It's all free. And you can start working with me. So I'm gonna be using this, uh, but obviously feel free to use your own vehicles and trailers and things if you would like to. There are a few things that we need to be uh, keeping consistent in terms of the way that we're working here, but all very simple things for us to set up. First things first, go into your file, append, go to the truck resource file, and we're gonna be importing a scene, the art scene. So let's just append this. So nothing has changed in our main scene here. Nothing that we're working on has been polluted or anything like that. What I've just done is I have appended this new scene in the top right hand corner here. So if you go up to your scene drop down, jump into the art scene and you can see that we've got in here the truck. So why have I done this in a different scene? Well, it can be convenient to have certain clutter like in this case we have an art scene so this is all of our like truck trailer tow hitch everything that we want in terms of the meshes and maybe we want a little bit of a, a playground here to be able to model stuff and play with things that can be separated from our actual game scene uh, if you're used to working with real game engines like unity and unreal then you'll be familiar with setting up different scenes for different environments throughout your game so similar kind of idea here Let's just walk through some of the things that you need to bear in mind if you are setting up the same thing for your own custom models. If we think about how we set up the chassis, it was a spline where the front axle and the rear axle were defined, but nothing else. We are going to be instancing our meshes on the front point. So you can sort of imagine the place that we want to be on the origin in our collection here is going to be the front axle and then just horizontally backwards. So the rear axle also is on that Z equals zero uh, position. Now I've just done this with a bit of kit bashing with some Markham 3D kit bashing stuff. Uh, so I'll link that down in the description as well if you want that kit bashing set from his gum road, fantastic stuff. But because we're dealing with a collection instance, as we build this up, we can put whatever we want in this collection. So if you want to add area lights or spotlights or anything like that, then you can do so. I've added actual headlights on here. The wheels are a bit special as well. So obviously make sure you've modeled it to whatever size you want. Front axle goes on 0, 0, 0 and rear axle wherever you want behind it. If we have a look at our wheels, the way that I've set this up is to be offset in the direction of the side that you're looking at here, and we can just mirror them for the other side. And just interesting, if you're if you're working with geometry nodes or if you're working with making wheels and you're not sure how to do it, a nice way of working here. Um, let's just break this down for you. So the hub is just a simple model, which has been... Um, uh, this was a screw modifier, but I have actually since applied it, so just using a screw modifier on a profile there. The studs here, this is geometry nodes just to array them in a circle, but the tread is where things probably get a little bit more interesting for people. This is how you can set up quite an easy uh, wheel system. So let's go back to the beginning here. So I just modeled a simple section like this. This could also be mirrored if you wanted to, but I did mine asymmetrically. I'm using a geometry nodes to create a cube and then use that as a boolean cutter just so that I can trim off those edges. I'm welding things just in case they get too close and I can just play with that as I go if I wanted to change the tread pattern. Arraying it in a line and then I've used this curve on a, uh, on a real bezier curve to make it circular. I then cast it towards a sphere. So the cast modifier lets you go towards a sphere if you wanted to. This is what I did here just to give it that roundness just because we're going for this kind of lunar transporter build. Then a simple solidify and a bevel to give me that tighter edges. 
and the tire itself is basically just a torus that I've stretched. So that gives me that baseline and then adding it all together gives me a nice little wheel. Something super important to deal with here is that the radius of your wheel should be pretty much one meter. And the reason that we're doing that is because when we defined the wheel radius on our chassis, that is what is gonna control the size of these wheels. So we want to make sure that this has a value of one so that when we scale it to the chassis value, it is correct for the chassis. So that is really important. So the position, I've just offset it to the right hand side of my origin and its axis is the X axis. And yes, a radius of one. The trailer, similarly to the main vehicle, we have our, uh, our wheel axis being on Z equals zero centered around the X axis and the front position here at zero zero is going to be the tow hitch. So wherever you want that tow hitch to hook on, that should be at zero zero zero. Additionally, I've made a little, uh, a little trailer tow. And the reason for this is because if you have a trailer behind a trailer behind a trailer, uh, if we think about this one, this doesn't really work. It's not attached to anything. So I made a little trailer tow hitch just hooking on the back there. And what we can do is we can simply instance this behind the main trailer for everything up to the penultimate trailer and that'll work nicely there. So there we go. Just adding that little feature makes a bit of difference. Make sure that you're working in collections here. And what we will do for the vehicle, and again, this is to do with our skin swapping idea that we touched on before when building the chassis. If we wanted to swap out the vehicle, then you would simply make a new vehicle in here. This would be called O2, um, I don't know, car, whatever it ends up being. So I'm doing it numerically, so it's in order. And then you would just build your car in here. It would have its own custom chassis that would be the correct size, wheel radius, axle length, and things like that. And then when you swap everything out, it'll just simply switch the, uh, the instance index. So nice and easy. So we've built all of this into our art collection. Let's head back to our scene where we're going to be setting this up. So in our game objects, we're going to actually add a new object. It's a new plane. This is going to be called a vehicle. And it's going to have a geometry nodes modifier on it. Let's go into our geometry nodes layout and let's make a new node tree in here which I will call, and again, I'm not using it in multiple places, so start with period, vehicle. We no longer need our debug cones from the end of here. So let's, I'm not gonna completely delete them, but I will just detach them for now. And I can maybe frame them up and call them debug, just so that we have them in case we need them later. So the main thing to pass out here is the curves. That's what we're interested in. We have all of these chassis in place. In our vehicle node tree, we're actually going to be reading in our game manager object here. So we don't need the plane, we need the game manager. Now, first things first, let's actually select our vehicle object here, and I'm going to press backslash value there to go into local view. And this is just going to hide everything else in the scene. I'm doing this because I want to make sure that I can see clearly what I'm adding and removing. So the first thing I want here, we're going to use a geometry operation, separate geometry based on some mask. We're separating splines. And to begin with, let's use the named attribute trailer. There we go. So now I have my cab and my trailers separately. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a new node group. So let's add a reroute, control G, tab back out. This is going to be called period. Again, I want to keep it out of that list and I will call it body. So tab in here, we're going to be having a uh, chassis on the input and the output is going to be an instance of the different pieces of the vehicle. So I'm actually gonna set this up as a node group so I can use the same thing for the cab as for the trailer, as for the tow hitch offset there. 
So it's very simple for us to set up. We're bringing our chassis in here. We're going to realize these instances with a realize instance node. We are then going to instance on those points. And we just need a collection for our instances. So collection info. And we will plug from the group input into that collection. Set this to pick instance and set your collection info to separate and reset there. Okay, let's tap back out here. We need to select the collection that we're after. So in this first instance, we're dealing with trailers. So let's add the trailer collection. The inverted one, which is going to be just the cab, this is going to take the vehicle. And let's just join these together. There we go. Awesome, that's looking actually pretty close. So let's go back into our body collection. So with our body, let's just hide those node options just to neaten things up. And something we can do as well is if I remove the name collection from our collection input, then we get a full width picker there. It just looks a bit nicer. The next thing we want is to connect our instance index up to the front here. And we will call this one skin index. That is where you would be able to swap between different vehicles if you had them. And we then also need to make sure that we're only instancing at the front of our splines. So make our selection with a curve read endpoint selection. I'll just plug this into my selection there. And I will set the start size to one and the end size to zero. And that just means that we're only instancing on the front of our spline. Okay, we're going to leave the scale at one, that's important. And the next thing we want to do is just set the rotation because these are obviously not following our splines correctly. So we're going to use an align Euler to vector. In fact, we're going to use two of them. So let's join these in series like this. The second one, we're going to mute for a moment and we're going to just join up to our rotation like this. And we're interested in aligning the Y axis to the curve tangent. So let's use our curve read curve tangent as the vector. Now these are facing back to front because our curve tangent, remember it counts up in reverse. So we want to make sure that we are scaling that curve tangent by minus one. And now our vehicle is correct. It's all facing forwards. Looks fantastic. A little bit cramped up, but we can fix that with our chassis specifications later. Now the other part of this is actually going to be aligning the Z axis while we lock the Y axis because we've already computed that. And we're going to be evaluating what the ground normal is, but we haven't created that vector yet. So when we start sampling the ground for collisions, we will create that at that point. So for now, let's mute the align or letter vector and we will come back to it. So here we go. This is our nice little setup here. We're aligning to the curve tangent and instancing the correct piece of the trailer. Well, we also want to do the same thing as the trailers for the trailer tow hitches. So if we go back to our art scene, we can remember that our tow hitch collection here, this is the piece that sticks on the back of the trailers to give us that fifth wheel connection for the next trailer. So back in the game scene here, we have our trailer tow hitch connection. Let's join this in as well. And what we have is these instance everywhere, but we just don't want it on the rearmost trailer. So what we're going to do is just basically delete that last spline. So how do we find our final trailer here? Well, we have our three trailers at this point. And if we delete geometry, we're going to be deleting the spline. Let's just mute this. We're looking for whichever spline has an index that is highest. So let's use the domain size node. This is a fantastic node, very powerful. And it just lets us find the simple size of different things. So for example, if I check my spline count, you can see that we have three spline counts on there. If I check my point count, we have six. So three spline counts. Now the spline that I want to delete has an index of two. So if I take three, subtract one, 
and then I find where the index is equal to that value and then use this to delete that spline then you can see that we just remove that final spline from the calculation there so fairly straightforward there this is uh, subtract one just because indices start at zero and obviously counting starts at one so that's why there's that difference there and then we can simply use this as our trailer tow hitch geometry instead so now we don't have that tow hitch on the back we're still going to need to sort out our wheels but before we get there let's just deal with our cab and trailer chassis so let's come in here i've selected my cab chassis let's increase our chassis length and we just need to go back to the first frame just to make sure that we have this as something that we can modify just because of our caching and I'm just going to bring this back until we sit nicely in the middle of that toe hitch position. And that's great. And then for our trailer chassis, again, we're just going to increase the chassis length just back until we sat in the middle of that toe hitch. There we go. Now this would really be a little bit too close. We're going to clip through in reality, but you can always modify this how you see fit. Next thing to do, sort out the wheels. This is actually going to be started in the game manager. Now the reason that I'm doing it inside the game manager rather than uh, inside my vehicle section is just because this is analytical, this first step, we're going to be solving the suspension and then separately in the vehicle object we're going to be instancing wheels. So at this point we're actually just working out where the wheels can go. So after our geometry, create a reroute, control G, tab out, this one is going to be period because we don't need it twice, solve underscore suspension right click show hide node options there we go tab in here and this is going to be chassis in and wheel positions out there we go so first things first let's just in our self suspension let's add a new store named attribute We'll call this one wheels. It is going to be a Boolean on the point domain and it's going to be turned on. Let's tab back out. And I'm actually just going to add a geometry join geometry so that I'm bringing those chassis across as well as the wheel positions. Back in our vehicle, back at the beginning here, we're actually going to use another separate geometry this time we're looking for the wheels boolean and the inverted result so whatever is not wheels is going to go down to the thing that we just set up and whatever is wheels this if i just set up a reroute here this is going to be where we instance wheels to begin with let's just set up a simple way to look at this so instance on points these are the points. The instance is going to be a collection, just how we did before. Separate and reset children. Wheel collection here. Pick instances. And remember that we said that the wheel radius was going to be controlled by the chassis. So we can control our scale here with the named attribute. Wheel radius. There we go. And then this can come along. Join in with our join geometry there. And there we have it. Let's put this into a group here, control G. And we're just gonna connect over that instance index as well, just so that we can swap out that skin index if we want to. Okay, so right now we have these little wheels over here and they're not really doing anything. So let's rename this group that we just made, period, wheels. So back into the game manager, let's sort out our positions. If I go into my local view here, just so that I'm only looking at the result of my viewer node now, I want to be able to create two sets of splines, one on each side. We can do this by duplicating the elements. So geometry, operations, duplicate elements. 
If we come into here and we duplicate the splines twice, so now I have two times as many splines. I now need to know whether I'm going to be moving things left or right. And we can do this actually based on the duplicate index. So I will have one set that has a zero and another set that has a one attached to it. Let's come in here with a geometry right set position. And now I can, you can see offset these left or right. How do we work out the direction that we're going to go in? Well, it's based on the curve tangent. And we need to find the perpendicular angle of the curve tangent, the ground normal, and this is then going to be the resulting vector. So we want to know what this is. So we have the curve tangent. Let's use a vector math node set to cross product. And for now, let's just set this to be 0, 0, 001 because we don't have a ground normal yet. I'm going to cross product this. I'm going to normalize the result just to make sure that that is a length of one. And then we can use this scaled to give us a direction. There we go. So now rather than just going left and right in the world space, we can go left and right according to the curve tangent. Doesn't matter which one goes which way, but we're going to use the duplicate index here, which is a zero and one value as a switch between negative and positive one. And then this can just be multiplied into the scale. So I could just plug this in directly and there you go. Now we've got a, an axle length of one meter on each side. So two meter axle length. But remember that we have that axle length value that we stored on the chassis. So we're going to grab a named attribute node in here, which is the axle length. And this is the whole axle length. We want to know what half of it is so that we can push in each direction. So let's multiply this by 0.5. And then we can multiply that output by this minus one positive one switch. And let's plug this multiply into that scale. So now you can see, and I will just come into my cab chassis and I will change my axle length here. You can see that the cab chassis is now wider because I've set that cab chassis width being higher. So there we go. Nice. This is all working perfectly. Let's come back to our game manager, back to that self suspension group. And let's see what we can continue in here with. Now we're also going to need to know which side a wheel is on so that we can flip it. Uh, remember that we were if this is our axes, we made our wheel on one side, because it's it's just got one face and you might have asymmetrical wheels. So in order for us to be able to flip it to the other side, for the left hand wheels or whichever, then we need to know which side left or right we're working on. And we can simply do this with a store named attribute on here. Let's store on the point domain, a new attribute called wheel underscore side. Keep it nice and descriptive. So I'm just going to be storing this again as that Boolean. So let's store the Boolean from that duplicate index, that zero and one as the wheel side value. We're not really solving suspension at this point because we don't have any terrain to solve with. That'll come later, but for now, let's just continue as we are. So we've set the position of our wheel positions out left and right. There is one more thing that I need to include here though, and we will see it if we look at our vehicle. We have back wheels, that's fantastic but we also have front wheels on our chassis. We do not want front wheels on the trailers. Works for the vehicle, doesn't work for the trailers. So I also need to come, grab my game manager, go into the sole sus suspension, and just at the end here, just before we store that named attribute, let's go ahead and delete geometry, any point that is a front. So let's grab an endpoint selection. We're going to delete 
any front wheels. There we go. But it must also be on a trailer. So we can't delete the front wheel of the vehicle because we need that. So if it is a front wheel and it is also the named attribute trailer, if it's both of these things, then it can be deleted. So the cab is not a trailer, so it will not be deleted there. Cinch that in there. Great stuff. All right, fantastic. So we have all of our wheel positions set up at this point. We will do some more once we've got ground in here. But for now, let's go back into our wheels and let's sort some things out here. Let's go ahead and sort out some more of our rotational issues here because we can see that these are all just facing in the positive y-axis. They're not following the vehicle itself. So in our wheel group, on fire rotation, let's do an align Euler to vector. To begin with, the first thing we want is to align it to the named attribute. Our first one was the wheel radius. This one is going to be the wheel direction vector here, and we're aligning the y-axis to that. Now our wheels are a bit small, we can fix that in a moment. The next thing that we want to do is we want to actually rotate this Euler rotation. We're going to be rotating around the local x-axis. And what this allows us to do is rotate the wheel. Okay, so we can rotate this wheel now. We're going to be using another named attribute. We need to make this one, but it will be called wheel rotation. It's going to be a float and it'll come into here. So the reason that we're setting this wheel rotation before we've actually made it is just because it's important to understand why we're setting these things up. Why are we building a wheel rotation? Well, it's so that we can actually control the wheel rotation based on where the vehicle is moving. And finally, the last thing for us to set up here is flipping the opposite side. So let's take our scale. We are going to be taking our wheel radius with a utility math math. Let's set this to multiply. And we need the wheel side attribute through a switch integer. Just keep it nice and simple here. And let's see. So these ones need to be minus one on this side and positive one on the other side. There we go. So now we have all of this. Fantastic. So this is pretty much where we want to be for our wheels at this point be a couple more changes as we gain terrain but for now this is exactly where we want to be. Let's go and check the chassis width, the chassis length and the wheel size attributes for our chassis. So we'll come in here, come into the side, let's have a look at our wheel radius. Let's increase this until it looks about, about right. Should it be one? Maybe a bit smaller than one. Let's go down to 0 0.9 I think for this probably seems fine. Maybe it should be one. That's looking pretty good, actually. And let's increase our chassis length so that we have that back wheel in the correct location on here. And we are also going to be setting our axle length to be a bit lower so that we've got those wheels in the vehicle's wheel arches. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Now it's sitting a bit low on the ground, but again, we're going to fix that once we have the terrain. So don't worry. So wheels are in place. Let's fix our tow hitch offset on here. Now for our actual main cab, this is actually a negative value. There we go. And let's grab our cab. Let's grab our trailers here. We are going to set our wheel radius to one. Now that we know that's what it should be. We're going to reduce our chassis length until this lines up with where it wants to be, somewhere around here. And we need to increase our axle length as well get these underneath those wheel arches. And then let's again adjust the tow hitch offset just until that's sitting where it wants to be. Good stuff. So now we've got all of our wheels in place and our vehicle. Let me just turn off the wireframe drawing there. Cool, this is looking great. I'm really enjoying this. 
Now we've set up the actual vehicle, but there's two more things that we need to cover in this session. One of them is the wheels rotation. So if we move forwards, it rotates forwards. If we move back, it rotates back. And the other one is going to be the spacing. So if you remember, if we monitor our thing and we, we start driving forwards. So in a straight line, this is all working fine, although it is sliding. As soon as we start steering, you can see that those back wheels catch up to the front and that's clearly not what we're after here. So rather than letting it do that we need to make sure we solve the spacing every frame to fix that distance offset. Let's jump back into our game manager. We've got solve movement. The next one on here is going to be control G on that reroute. Make a bit of space. This one is going to be period because I'm going to use it once. Solve underscore spacing. Right click, show hide node options. Let's tab in here and let's make sure that we've got a chassis coming from the front to the back of that node group. Looking good. Now what we want here is we're going to solve the front of each spline and then we're going to solve the back of each spline. So the first position and then the second position. And we can do all of this because I have all of the splines containing all of their information about their length and the toe hitch offset each time. So if we come in here, we're going to be first of all using a geometry right set position. And I want to be making sure that this first one is using the end point selection, just so that we make sure we're only impacting the start point of each spline. So I'm going to go into the local view again here, just so I can see this. And if I move this up, you can see that I'm only moving the start of each spline. So the reason this happens as you go around the corner, so you've got a spline like this. If I then move this one over to the side and this one forwards a little bit, because remember, we're actually driving all the wheels. This distance is a bit shorter. And then this distance is a bit shorter as well. And then this distance is, and it just kind of keeps getting shorter as you go and one will follow the other and it will get a bit shorter and a bit shorter. And each step is just shrinking down. So what we need to do is the front of each spline. If I think of this spline here behind this spline here, I need to position its front vertex based on, if I find the front of the one in front, I know the length of it and I know the offset. So then I can simply position the point at that point. So we're going to be doing a little bit of index manipulation here. It's a good practice thing to do. So let's look at our control points, zero and one. If we, let's just draw this out. Actually, this will be easier. So we have several trailers. We have zero, one, two, three, four, and five as our positions. For the cab, I don't need to actually worry too much about the front because it's it's just not important at this point. So I can leave the front where it is. For the second one, we want to know the front position of the previous vehicle. So this one wants to be zero, this one wants to be two, and so on. So the next one would want to be four, being the front of the next spline. So let's take an index. So it's not just halving each time, we're actually going back like two, two points. So let's take our index. We're also going to take an evaluate at index node. This is going to be a vector because we're looking for the position data of the index subtract two. That is our index. So the current index minus two is stepping forward two indices. So if I were to just plug this straight into the position, then everything's going to move around a little bit. And just to debug this, let's grab a mix node, set to vector. And I'm just going to plug position into here. Then I'll plug position into this evaluate on domain as well. And then you can see that we're basically just moving this and you can see it's overlapping, but it'll move to the start position of the spline in front of it. So we don't quite want that. What I'm interested in is the combination of some things. I want to know the chassis length. So that's the named attribute chassis length. 
And I also want to know the toe hitch offset. So these two things, if I add these together, then this is the distance from the front of the spline in front that I now need to be stepped back, if that makes sense. So the, so if we have two splines, this distance, the length of that spline plus the toe hitch offset is where I want to be. In terms of 3D space, this is coming from the position at the start of that, add the, um, add a vector which is in the curve tangent direction. So let's add a curve tangent node here, scaled by that length that we're just calculating. So we're taking the position of the front, we're going in the direction of the spline by the length of the spline plus the little offset. And this is where we're setting ourselves up. And each one will do this every frame. It will look at the spline in front of it and say, oh, well, actually I should be here instead. So now this is going to come up at this uh, evaluate at index. And all of this is being calculated based on the spline in front because of this evaluate at index stuff. So the tangent and the chassis length and the toe hitch offset. So when we're doing the first trailer, it's actually looking at the chassis length and toe hitch offset of the cab because we're doing that index offset. So these are all now in the right place. So I can remove this mix and I'll just plug this collection of nodes up into that position. So I've explicitly defined, okay, you've moved, everything's moved around. This is where you should be. So the next thing that we need is a little bit simpler. We want to work out where the back of each spline should be. So let's take another endpoint selection, this time zero on the start, one on the back. And the position is really easy for us to find here. So we have, let's say we've got our spline and we've just moved the front a little bit. So now our spline looks like this. We need to fix up the length. So I just need to find the difference between the current spline length, which I can do with a spline length node, the difference between this and the named attribute chassis length. And I can just use this value basically to scale the spline tangent and then just move it back a little bit or forwards a little bit, whatever that ends up being. So again, we're just going to take our curve tangent and a scale node bring this up here, bring that onto the scale. We're not needing to do any uh, evaluation at different points. We're just doing this all simply on the spline itself. So check the spline length, see how different it is from what it should be and just reset that tail position based on where it should be following. So let's play, Oh, that's gone crazy. So let's invert this subtract, let's put the length into the bottom and the chassis length into the top. And now when I play, you can see nothing happens. Ah, one thing that I've just done there actually is my front, my trailer is not able to move, which is kind of crunching everything up there. You can see. So my, my cab is not able to move just because we've done this evaluator index on all of these things. So I actually do not want this first one to be happening on, um, on the cab. So I need it to, to be the start size and with a Boolean math and when this is the named attribute trailer. So now you can see as I move these around, fantastic. That is actually a properly solved chain of trailers here. Good stuff. So if I come back here to the general view and I press play, you can see that we now actually move where we expect to, we can reverse and it will jackknife properly and things will go where we're going. Fantastic. Final thing for this session, we need to sort out the wheel rotation. Right now, 
everything slides. And we want to make sure that the wheels are rotating nicely and it feels like it's looking like it's driving. So let's tab back out. We're going to be making our final group here for today. Reroute, control G, tab back out. This one is going to be period solve underscore wheel underscore rotation. Show hide node options, there we go. And again, let's tab in here, make sure we have chassis coming in and through. Always good to keep things neat as you work. The easiest way for us to work this out, if I go back, I've solved the movement and there'll be other things as well, ground collisions, spacing, other object collisions. These are all gonna happen before our wheel rotation. But something that we can do to make our lives easier is simply to store the named attribute start pause, as in start position, at the beginning of the loop before we do any of those transforms. And I'm simply gonna store the position there. Then we're gonna deal with the steering, the movement and the spacing. And then when we come to our wheel rotation, what we can do is we can find the rotation that we should have based on the difference in position from where we are now versus the start of the loop. So let's take the current position. We are going to be finding the difference, so subtract the start position. Uh, and that is a named attribute. Start underscore pause. Now, I'm not interested in the vector there. I'm just interested in the length of that. So the distance traveled. And then we're going to be using this in some calculation to store the wheel rotation. Wheel underscore rotation. Here we go. So it's just going to be a float value and we are using that simply to rotate the wheels here. There we go. So I just went back to the start frame just so I could demonstrate that without the cache coming in the problem, getting in the way. Now, because this is a loop and we're simply going to add each frame relative to the previous frame, what I want to do just before I work out anything, any calculation, because I know this is a relative transform, I'm not saying, oh, it's got to be 1136 degrees. No, it just needs to be some amount further than the previous frame or less than the previous frame. So let's grab a named attribute for our wheel rotation. Just copy and paste that in there. And I will add our new calculated value to this. How do we work out how many degrees or radians specifically, how do we work out how far to rotate a wheel based on a distance traveled? Do you know the formula for working out the circumference of a circle? The formula is 2 pi r. Now, at least when I was at school, this was never really explained, but 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees, but in radians. So what we actually have here is the angle theta multiplied by the radius. So I want to know what the angle theta is, and that's going to equal the arc length, or I'll just call it L here. Okay, so I know what L is, because it's this, it's the distance traveled this loop. So what I can do is if I divide both sides by R, then I can cancel it out on this one side, and I'm left with theta is equal to L over R. I know what the radius is because I have a named attribute called wheel radius and I can just use this. So I have the wheel radius, I have the length. If I divide the length by the wheel radius, this is going to give me the rotation that I need. So if I press play and I monitor my controller, you can see this is going to turn the wheels almost correctly. If I accelerate forwards, then they go backwards. Uh, and if I go backwards, they're going correctly. So it's always calculating the rotation uh, the same direction. So let's change this. When we were doing movement, so back into the solve movement, we stored whether we were going forwards or backwards into a 
uh, a named attribute called direction sign. So let's just use that. So we have our divide here. After the divide, we are going to multiply it by an attribute called dir sign sign direction sign. And now if I press play and I monitor my controller, I'm going to go forwards or backwards and it's reversed now for both, but that's good. We can just simply add another multiply set to minus one. And then when we go forwards, it looks correct. When we go back, it looks correct. We can steer and things look correct. How cool is that? This is like, it's a, just a proper game at this point. I just, I've, it blows my mind, honestly, whenever I get to this point with projects like this and it's like, I'm just using a gamepad using an Xbox controller to actually build a game. And it's just fun, relatively simple bits of math. Takes a bit to put it together. And uh, I do not underestimate how challenging this is to come at this like as a, as a fresh project. But hopefully this is helping you see that actually geometry nodes is wild. You can do so many cool things with it. Do you wanna have one more little thing? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Open up your shader editor, select your vehicle, go into shaded mode, open up your vehicle object, and let's get into a shader editor. Let's add the light red just to everything. It's not actually going to apply because we're all instanced here, but it's these tail lights. So if we have a look at our our main, um, our, our vehicle node tree here, let's go ahead and add a store named attribute node to this. It's gonna just be a float and it's important that you do put it on the instance domain because if you put it on the point domain, it's gonna to have to write it to every single one of these vertices. If you do it on the instance domain, it's gonna just do it on four different instances. So very important that you do that. It's gonna be a float on the instance domain called breaking. And then what we want to do, let's just grab our X input reader. Let's do this directly. And we're interested in the left trigger here so just that breaking value, control H, and actually let's do this uh, when it is greater than some value. So when my finger is off it, it's zero. Uh, let's go greater than 0.05, something like that, just to give it a little bit of a wiggle room in there. And then in our shader, let's add an input attribute called breaking. Plug this into our factor here. Let's go on off. Let's set this to instancer because these are the instances. And now if we monitor, when I pull that trigger, the brake lights come on. So when I brake the vehicle, the brake lights come on. It's just so cool. There's so much you can do with this. I, uh, I'm gonna stop here because it's been a long session already, but the vehicle is now set up. Join me in the next session where we're going to be building our terrain, our ground collisions, collisions with buildings, there's a ton of stuff that we need to cover there for collisions and solving for that kind of thing. I'll see you there.